I'm not really one for rod repairs and fixing rods anymore, but when a really good friend of you has messed up his rod in the boat and he's pretty much chewed it all up, he begged me to fix it, I couldn't really say no. This is rod building, let's fix a mate's rod. I'm Gary Benny, English rod builder living in Sweden. I've been building rods for many years and now you're gonna join me in my workshop going through tips, tricks, techniques, tools of the trade, all the things you want to know when you're coming to build a rod. We're gonna drink a lot of tea, so join me on the ride. Let's have some fun. This is rod building, let's do this. So what happened here then? Uh, well, it looks to me like he's chewed on it, he got hungry. Uh, no, I don't know. Basically, it's damaged the EVA really badly. And I mean, it's fishable, it's not a big deal, but it does look really bad. And being one of his favorite rods, uh, like I said, I agreed I'd do a fix up for him. So we're gonna go through and uh, yeah, I thought why not do a little video as we're gonna do it and show without removing the guides or the seat how to do a repair from behind the seat. Now, this is something that will come up quite often and we can just slide on a new bit of EVA on there. We could pressure fit it on from the back. That'd be pretty easy and it would look identical. But I mean, that's a bit boring and I'm thinking it's a friend and he's expecting it to come back identical, but how about we do something a little bit better? I've got an idea. So I just grabbed the carbon handle box. I'm thinking we're gonna do this guy an absolute solid. We're not just gonna repair it, we're gonna upgrade it. So we're gonna make it really cool looking. Quite a long grip here, so there's gonna be a little bit to play with underneath there, but I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna match it up with just like uh, one of these G2 grips here. Uh, we've even got some like 3K stars, a bit long. You know, I'm gonna have a look what we've got. I'm gonna dig out some components, measure up for the winding check with our digital calipers. Um, and then I'm gonna run through exactly the easiest way to do this to make it look good. You have to remember that there's a taper to the blank, so there's a lot to think about. I'm gonna grab some bits and uh, yeah, start cutting. So we've dragged out some components. Uh, I've got some G2 carbon grips here and these things are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, now I've had a look, the length is a little bit shorter than the grip we've got. So we're gonna end up with a little bit of work uh, where it's gonna be cut away here. I'm gonna cut away that in a minute. Um, another option I did see though is I do have this adjustable kit here. Now normally this is for sort of like casting and casting rods, but uh, this is a really nice rear grip. And what I'm thinking is if possible, maybe we should install like a full rear carbon grip behind. I'm gonna have to measure it up and check. So I'm gonna start with that, get the calipers and see what we got. So I think we could actually get away with both. It's not a problem. And I'm kind of liking the idea of doing the full grip, but I need to check inside this rear collar here to see if it would actually be able to slide over the, the carbon rear grip there. So there's nothing more to do than uh, get the knife and start cutting. So a tip for when you're doing any form of cutting, always to use a brand new blade. Make sure it's very, very sharp and cut away from you. Uh, I have these cutting boards here. Not only is it a good surface to cut onto, you can add a bit of grip so you can push down and cut into the grip. Try not to cut down into the blank, cut along the blank. And what I'll just do is very easily just push down the blank in numerous motions like so and we're gonna see if we can just free up the EVA. You notice I'm not cutting from the front here, but this is because we've got a winding check and I don't wanna be cutting into the blank there. So I'm just gonna cut down and then we can remove some EVA and see what the damage is. It's not that bad, it's pretty clean underneath actually. We're not gonna use the butt cap again, so that one we'll remove with a bit of heat in a minute. If we were gonna reuse the butt cap, I mean, it's a pretty cool butt cap actually, but um, it's a little bit small for what we want. So when I've done like the so, then I'm gonna turn it around and again, cutting away from me, down to the winding check at the front and just push on the knife like so, and then give it a little push with your thumb if you need extra movement, just go steady. You get a bit more control doing it like that. Just keep moving all that EVA away. And again, you notice I'm really trying to keep the blade flat. I don't wanna be digging into the blank at all. Even though there's a lot of glue under there we're gonna to have to clean up, I wanna keep it as, as clean as possible. So I'm getting to the winding check now and I'm seeing that it's, it's really well glued on there. Um, I'm not quite sure how we're gonna move that one. We might have to cut it off. 
We'll see. So now I'm gonna remove that butt cap. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take out that sticker very carefully, like so. And then we're gonna just, this is a three piece butt cap. So if you know how they're made, you can just slice off the rubber. And that's gonna just leave me a piece of aluminium at the back, which I can heat up. If I can get it to come off, I have to cut into it. Again, cutting away from yourself, going very, very careful. I'm just gonna try and get it to remove like so. And there we have it. We can now remove that little trim ring. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna get some heat on that little butt cap and that will uh, heat up the glue inside and we'll be able to easily just slide that out. So first, let's clean up a little bit. We've got a lot of mess here. Let's push it all to the side. Let's have a look and get some pliers. You can use any sort of grips. I have a few different ones. You know, so I normally coat them with masking tape. That's because sometimes I don't want to damage the components if I'm gripping them. Uh, but uh, yeah, with this one, we're not worried. Try a little heat first. Grip. And then just pull it out, like so. Now we're gonna have a look at this little one. I'm not sure this is gonna be so easy, but we're gonna have a quick look. I'm just gonna just remove a little bit more EVA. It's an arbor winding check by the looks of things, which means it's got a little bit of an extra collar on it. It's a bit longer than you think. You don't see the whole winding check. And then I'm gonna just try and cut really clean to the back of it, but you have to remove all the glue from behind it to be able to do that. So again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just apply a little bit of heat. Now, this is a bit tricky. You don't wanna apply too much. You just wanna sort of flash it like this and just get the glue just to heat up a little bit on the winding check. The metal heats up really quickly. Like I said, give it a little bit, get the pliers on there, grip gently and just rotate and we've got it going like so. There we go. Done a few of those in the past. So there we go. Now we've got everything off uh, and we just need to sort of, you know, just clean it off and see what we've got. This is a gloss clear blank. So when I saw this, I knew it was gonna be a little bit of a tricky one. So what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna keep moving this down and I think that I'm just gonna gently heat an area like so, not to, not to damage the carbon. And then I'm just gonna gently move this blade down and we're gonna just clean the carbon up. Okay, when we get to that stage, the best thing to do is just to take a little bit of light sandpaper and just clean it up. So now I've got some 350 grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna just rub over the top and just see how clean that section is under that. Okay, so that's pretty clean now. I'm just gonna wipe it off with a bit of alcohol and see what we've got. Let's have a look when it's revealed. And there you go. We've got a pretty clean blank there. We did a really good job. You can see we weren't scratching into the carbon at all. We were just literally removing that clear gloss and glue. So now we've got a really clean end. Now we're gonna start looking at dry fit in this grip. But firstly, I'm just gonna clear up this mess and then we'll start having a look at doing some fitting. So we're all cleaned up and looking ready to go. Uh, I could do a little bit more. I can see some high spots of glue just here, but now it's pretty clean. It's very smooth. A little bit of dust on there. We can clean that off later. So now we're gonna have a little look. Now we know the grip's gonna fit there and it's gonna come up to around there. So I'm gonna take a China marker and then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lay this down and I get one of my favorite tools out. It's a pretty cool tool actually. It's a measure with different increments um, for different sizes. So you've got centimeters on here. And what I like about this one is you can just hold it down the blank like that, um, or like so. And it's quite easy to see the increments. You can put the blank in the middle here. These you can pick up from pretty much anywhere. So we're gonna just do like this. And we can see that we've got this grip is eight and a half centimeters roughly. So I'm gonna mark eight and a half centimeters on the blank and just see where we come out. So it's gonna be roughly there, yep. So now you can see we've got a mark there and that's the length of where the carbon butt grip would go. 
Um, we've got a few centimeters here of a cleanup area that we'd have to look at. We could clear coat it um, or we could wrap up over it and maybe do something like that. But I'm kind of thinking we should really, really make it look cool and do this kind of like full carbon rear grip, which just kind of looks awesome. I'm gonna measure up the back there. If it fits, let's go for it. So we've decided to go with a full carbon rear grip and it's going to look absolutely amazing in my opinion. It is going to cover up some logos and stuff, but you know what? I'm sure we can write his name on the blank and he's going to love it. He knows what the rod is anyway. Like I said, it's one of his favorite rods. I'm just going to have to remove this wrapping at the back of the reel seat here because that's where the grip's going to sit up to just so we can arbor it up and get it all perfect. I'm going to have to cut the grip to the right length. It's a little bit too long, uh, so we'll show you doing that as well. Let's crack on. So now we've cleaned off the back there. It's looking really clean. Let's just see. Yeah, it's gonna go up really nice. Obviously we've got an arbor in the back there we need to compensate for. We're gonna fix that one. But I think we're, we're not too far over. Let's measure it up and see what total length we need to do. 27 and a half centimeters it would be to be safe. So we'll cut it at 27 and a half. That gives us a little bit of tolerance there for the saw blade and that should be pretty good. So when we've cut the top of the grip there to shape, all I'm going to do is give it a little rub on some sandpaper and that's just to take any rough edges off there. It's looking really good. One thing that's really good with that cutting jig there is you always get a 90 degree cut and that's really important when you're doing things like this where you want to butt it up straight against the back of anything. We still got that gap to work about. Now we're going to work out the arbor. To do that, I'm going to get out one of my reamers and uh, make the hole inside a little bit bigger so we can start fitting it on got the diameter at the back there, it's about 14 millimeters, and we have the foam inside the rear grip that we've sized, uh, ready to fit on the back. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a power reamer on the drill. So all your reamers are tapered, of course, and we'll have to start with one and then step it up to the next size. Go very careful when you do this. Um, you wanna always hold the drill down. Let's put the cable behind me. And you wanna just push it on and gently push the grip up. Don't push the drill down. Knock some of that dust out. And then we're gonna step it up to the next size. Now, a little tip I can give you is always use your digital calipers. What you wanna do is put them onto the back there, clamp it down, take it off, and then come back to your reamer and just basically go down the reamer until you get roughly where it's gonna to wanna to stop. And it's gonna be around about there, like so. And so now you know that halfway down that reamer, you don't wanna go anymore. You don't wanna make it too big because then you're gonna to have to try and fill it with tape, etc. So I would come back about a centimeter, two centimeters before that. So you know, what you could also do there is do a little mark on the reamer if you wanted, or you could add a bit of tape over the top. Uh, and that's gonna give you a little mark just to stop. So. We'll just take a bit of tape and we know that roughly here it's starting to go tight. So we're gonna go back a little ways and just put a ring of tape. So now we know that's where we're gonna ream up to. And as simple as that. So we've reamed it now to size. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit smaller than what the blank is and that's done on purpose. This foam in here is expanding so you've got a little bit of room to push it and work it on there. I think it's gonna fit really good. We're gonna just do a dry fit now and see if we can get it on there. It is a little bit tricky. You need to sort of locate the blank into the position and sort of give it a twist and then you'll see it will come through. And that is how it's gonna look. It's pretty smart. Let's put on the rear collar there. We don't want to be forgetting that one. And try again, just to make sure everything lines up nicely. Again, just make sure the grip's lined up. Give it a little twist, and then go into position. It's gonna look like that. Will it unscrew? Of course it will, because we already checked. 
absolutely perfect fit. So there we have it, that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna get this one uh, ready to go, ready to glue up. I'm gonna put an arbor at the front here. Now the beauty with this grip is we've already got a, an arbor down here and we've also don't need much of an arbor because this is solid material. So you just need an arbor at the top here. I see some people putting multiple arbors down but it's really hard material, you don't really need it. Uh, the only thing we need to do now is get ready for the butt cap which is gonna go on the end here. So I'm gonna dry fit that one and uh, yeah, I'm gonna put it together and we'll see when it's done. So a bit of a schoolboy error, I was fitting the butt cap and wondering why it's not fitting and I've just had a look in the back in there. There's some residue glue in there, so I just need to move that out. It's not a lot. If it was a lot, I could take the Dremel and poke it inside just to remove it, but I think it's gonna snap out very easy with like a pick or something. So we'll try that first because it's easier and then uh, we'll see how we go. So there we have it, check that out all dry fitted up, ready to rock and roll. An absolute fantastic look to that rod. I think he's gonna absolutely love it. Uh, it's really nice, super sleek design. If he doesn't like it, I'll keep it. So for this one, I'm just gonna use the famous five minute that I love. Um, it's gonna set up really quickly and it's it's you know not a lot of air I need to glue, so it will run into the areas pretty good. Very simply, what I wanna be doing is adding the glue from sort of roughly behind where the arbor's gonna be on the back here up to this area. Um, and you need to keep moving it uh, so the glue will run down around the arbor and you get a really good bond, but it's not gonna be a tricky one, this one. So it's gonna mix up some of this five minute glue and get it on there. One thing that came to my attention now is that when we're pushing this glue up, we need to be really careful we're not gonna glue the back of this up. So I'm gonna really crank that up there and just bring it up as high as I can. I don't wanna glue that, uh, that collar on. That would be an absolute disaster, uh, not being able to put your reel on. So we're just gonna apply some glue around the back of that arbor there. And then also we're just gonna get some more glue and apply it down the bottom here where we know that the arbor's gonna sit down the bottom. Make sure it's a fair bit, because we want to run down. And the reason I'm spreading it like that is because this glue will run, and I know that uh, I need to keep it a little bit thinner so I can get this over without making too much mess. Now, it's a little bit like one of those metal detectors. You need to make sure you don't push too much glue up. Slide it all the way up. And when you feel the arbor at the bottom, just make sure the glue runs in. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a push just to get it on there, and there we go. Let's give it a rotate so the glue starts to go down inside. You've got some air bubbles there. What you can do is just hit it with a little bit of heat and that'll just make the epoxy just run a little bit easier. And then we need a bit of paper just to glue up, clean off. Take one of our little pieces here. I'm just gonna wipe that glue away like so, a little bit more. And there's glue on the back side here. So it is gonna glue nice to the arbor. We push it up to the back and then we're gonna give it another little clean because there's more glue pushing around now and then very simply we're gonna push it in. And very importantly, on the back of these grips here, there is an American Tackle logo, so I'm just gonna turn it around until I see it on the top there. All details, and there she is. Absolutely perfect. And I can feel now the glue is heating up inside that grip. It's running down to that bottom arbor, and that'll fill up there. We've got plenty of glue around here. The spare time when you're waiting to go off, just you know, spend a bit of time and really sort of clean up. Just make sure there's no glue residue around. Check the butt there, make sure everything looks good, looks great. And we've got five minutes to make a cup of tea. So, it's been about five minutes. That there's now gonna be set and really nice. Let's check it over. It's really clean, really good. Wind this one back a little bit, doesn't need to be so tight. It's absolutely perfect. Well, there's nothing left for it now but then just to put the butt cap in. Um, you'll notice I made sure that I went over by a few millimeters on the length of the grip the saw blade and all included. And that's just to make sure that the, the butt of the rod doesn't poke out. It's very important to do all your dry fitting in advance. Make sure everything fits ni nicely. So it's gonna be no gaps. Uh, it's a common mistake for people. They don't measure twice and cut once and they're gonna, when they come to glue it up, they finally got like a five millimeter gap because they calculated wrong. When we do this now, we're gonna make sure we pour a lot of glue in the back here because we wanna fill glue back around the back of the arbor as well. And that will be uh, everything. I'm gonna do this for some more five minute. 
So now what we're gonna do is gonna bring the blank down so it's completely vertical to me, scoop up some of the glue, and we're just gonna let it pour in around the back there. It doesn't matter if it goes down the blank hole also because we want that for the butt cap. Take a bit more. And just dribble it down in there like so. And we're gonna get our butt cap and I'm just gonna put the residue just on top of the cap there. And then it's very simple just to pop it into position. Just give it a decent push, rotate at the same time, and there you have it. That's finished. Well, in five minutes it will be. I think he's gonna be really, really happy. I know I would if uh, I came in with a damaged grip and thought I was just gonna get a bit of EVA back on there. But uh, yeah, I'm really liking that. We'll see what he thinks when he collects it. But there we go. A quick install, very easy to do, and a performance upgrade in my opinion. So this is Rob Building. Thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure as always. Uh, if you like these, any of these components, check out americantackle.us. You'll find everything on the website. Until next time, that's a wrap.